Hi guys, welcome to my channel and to this video. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about how the way you feel about yourself affects the way you dress and how the way you dress affects the way you feel about yourself. Yeah, that's a doozy. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you guys some tips and things that worked for me personally in evaluating my closet and the way I'm dressing myself to see if my closet and the clothes that I'm wearing are actually representative of me or of other people's expectations. So let's go. <laughs> So self-esteem, there is such a strong correlation, I believe, between our self-esteem and the way we dress ourselves. It can either influence us to try to hide ourselves and hide our bodies, or it can even influence the way we dress as in we're dressing for others or expectations that we believe need to be met. And I think this is so true for women, especially. And there have been studies done in regards to this on how, especially for adolescents and for younger women, like in their early 20s and their late teen years, how we associate our appearance with acceptance, whether it's from our peers, from our loved ones, from our family, we dress in a way to receive acceptance and validation from others sometimes. And I've been there. <laughs> I have definitely been through so many phases of where the way that I dressed was more for others and for fitting in than for what I actually wanted to wear. I'm gonna go into some of my own experiences and how self-esteem or your self-image affects the way you dress. One is your body image and how you feel about your body. So if you're ashamed of your body, if there are certain things about your body that you don't like and you're uncomfortable with when you look in the mirror, you're probably going to try to hide those parts of yourself from others. And that's what I did when I had very low self-esteem and when I had a negative body image, I would tear myself apart whenever I looked into the mirror. I tried to hide my body because I was ashamed of it and I didn't love it and I didn't want to risk other people judging me for it because I judged myself, right? So everybody else must be judging me too. So I would wear tank tops or t-shirts when I would go to the pool and I would put shorts on because I didn't want to show my skin. I would, I stopped wearing shorts. I started wearing pants most of the time. I rarely ever wore mini skirts because again, I was uncomfortable with showing my legs because I didn't like the way they looked. So body image influenced the way I dressed. The other way, number two, is seeking validation from others. And I've been there, not ashamed to say it, where I used to dress a certain way in order to get approval from my friends and from people who I looked up to. And even for, ugh, <laughs> even for men, I've never been one to show a lot of skin because for me, it's just like, I don't feel comfortable, not because of my body, but I feel like I constantly have to be like readjusting everything. And I'm like, I don't wanna have to worry about that. Um, so I used to dress like super sexy because I would see all of the other girls and my close friends dressing that way. So I felt like, well, I guess I should dress this way too. So it was like we were carbon copies of each other. Like, oh, mini skirt, crop top, super high heels. Like we all looked like a little army. <laughs> Uh, just marching into the clubs and again that was a phase in my life and there's nothing wrong with dressing sexy but sometimes you have to ask yourself if you're dressing to fit in or because the other people around you are dressing that way 
And I think advertising and influencers and social media can play a big part in that too. When you see a whole bunch of women dressing a certain way and you start thinking, is that how I'm supposed to be dressing? Like, am I dressing too frumpy? Am I like a prude because I don't wanna show a lot of skin or dress this certain way? So, and I'll talk about ways to combat that later, but that's something can, that can definitely influence the way you dress. Number three. So this kind of goes hand in hand with seeking approval from others, but just dressing to fit in. And this isn't only in your social circles, like when you're out with your friends, but at work too. And when I started my career and I had just graduated college, I started looking for professional clothing and dressing in a way that I thought was expected of me now that I was a working woman out in the world. So I bought the most bland <laughs> office wardrobe, just like simple trousers, like these loose button up shirts that were way too big on me, like pencil skirts, which I don't really like that much, not for me. And those tight, like fitted button ups, like the cotton stretch button ups, which I loathe with the passion. <laughs> it's just, I don't feel comfortable in them and I'm constantly like, eh, eh. I feel like I'm being suffocated. <laughs> so I bought a lot of these clothes that do not represent me as a person or my personality because this is how I thought I should be dressing as a professional. And I was dressing myself as this person that I wasn't and my personality wasn't shining through. And honestly, it affected my confidence because I would always be dressed and I'd look in the mirror at work and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> and I feel like inside I knew that that wasn't me, but I didn't know how to dress because I felt like one, I had to hide my body at work as a woman to be taken seriously because I didn't want to get unwanted, unwanted intention and to be recognized for my looks or the way I dress instead of my accomplishments and how hard I was trying. So I tried to hide myself and blend in so that I wouldn't stand out in that way. But in retrospect, that affected my confidence, which I was already not that confident in my skills, especially at the beginning of my career. So I felt like it was like a vicious cycle where I already wasn't confident and that was reflecting in the way I dressed. And then I'd look in the mirror and I wasn't happy with what I saw because what I was seeing was not me. So that didn't help my confidence at all. So those are three ways that I've personally experienced of how the way I dressed affected the way I felt about myself and also how my self-image and my self-esteem impacted the way that I dressed because I was either seeking validation from my friends or I was trying to fit in at work and be taken seriously or I was trying to hide myself because I was uncomfortable with my body and I didn't want anybody else to see it. So how can you figure out if the way you're dressing is affecting the way you feel about yourself and if your self-esteem or self-image is driving your clothing choices? One of the first things that helped me realize this is evaluating my, my closet. So evaluate your closet and the clothes you have. Are they you? Like when you put them on, do you feel happy? Do they bring you joy? Do they make you feel confident in yourself and look in the mirror and be like, mm, I'm looking good today. Yes, I'm going to crush it. I'm a confident woman. I'm going to go out there and kick some ass. Maybe you won't think all of those things, but <laughs> just look in the mirror and see when you try them on, is this me? Does this make me feel happy? And if it doesn't, throw it away. <laughs> Because if it doesn't make you feel good, then it's not 
going to make you feel confident when you're out there in the world. And I feel like a lot of us hide ourselves in our clothes instead of using it to boost our self-confidence. Also, the next tip, when you're about to buy something or when you're trying something on that you just bought, ask yourself some questions. Why did you buy that? Did you buy it because it's you and it's your style and it makes you happy? Similar to when you try on clothes that you already own. How does it make you feel? Why did you buy it? Did you buy it for yourself or did you buy it because of an image you're trying to show the world? The other thing, which is tough, and I, ha I have to do this a lot when I shop as well, is are you buying it because you actually like it or are you buying it because it looks good on the model? And that may be a tough pill to swallow. And I've done it before too, where you see an image and you see advertising or an influencer wearing a piece of clothing, like it could be a dress or it can even be makeup. And you think, wow, that is gorgeous. That looks amazing. I love it. And then you, you're tempted to buy it. You buy it and then you get it, you try it on. And all of a sudden you look in the mirror and you're like, what? <laughs> this is not what I expected. And then you almost feel bad because you're thinking, well, I loved it when I saw it online, so why don't I like it on me? And then if you really think about it, it's like, oh, it's because it looked really good on that model and it looked good on her, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right for me. And I'm not saying it's because of your body type or your age. It could just not be your style. So that's something that you have to evaluate as you're shopping because sometimes we can get so tricked by marketing in the media. And I can say this, guys, I've been working in marketing for 10 years now. And marketing can be used as a way to make you feel like you need something. You don't really need it but it makes you want it because it makes you think that you need it. And this can happen with any product out there, not just clothing, but we're gonna stick to clothing right now. Even like when you see something that's trendy, you see it everywhere. You see everybody wearing it, you see it on Instagram, you see articles about it, and then you start thinking like, ooh, maybe, maybe I want this. Like. I kind of like this and then you buy it and you're like, what was I thinking? It's happened to me. Let me know in the comments if it's happened to you, but I've had so many purchases that I've regretted in the past because I'm like, I didn't really buy this because I love it. I bought it because I fell for some really good marketing. <laughs> and then the other thing, which also ties in to evaluating your closet is See if you struggle to get dressed in the morning. Do you have to try on several different outfits? Are you constantly putting on like a different top or trying on a different dress and then you look in the mirror and you're just frustrated because nothing works? Another raw moment, I've suffered from panic attacks most of my life. It's gotten better. I still get them every once in a while. Sometimes it would be triggered from a stressful event or a traumatic event, but sometimes the tiniest little stressors would set me off. <laughs> so one of the ways that I would get panic attacks was in the morning when I was getting dressed. And it sounds so silly, but I would be taking forever in the morning sometimes to get dressed and I would try on so many different outfits. And it was like, it's like a, a tornado had gone through my closet. There was just like clothes thrown everywhere and I was rushing and trying things on and I'd look in the mirror and I'd get so frustrated and then the panic would set in and my heart would start palpitating. I would start shaking. I would feel like 
all of a sudden I couldn't breathe and I would start hyperventilating and I would break out in cold sweats. And then the worst thing that I did was, and always happened, I would look at the clock, I would look at my phone and see what time it was and realize, oh my God, I've been trying to get dressed for over 20 minutes now and now I'm going to be late for work. And then that would just give me even more anxiety and I'd crumble into an anxious mess and I'd start crying and like curling up on the floor or laying in bed because I was just so frustrated and I still haven't been able to get dressed and now I'm going to be late to work and what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I crying about not being able to get dressed in the morning? And I wish I could say that only happened once, but that happened several times. And looking back at it, it was because my clothes weren't me. I was putting on all of these clothes that weren't flattering on me because I was trying to hide myself. I was trying to hide who Natasha really was because I felt like I had to put on a fake persona when I went to work because that's what I thought I had to be. Like I felt like I couldn't be fun and quirky. And especially since I wasn't confident in my skills yet, I didn't feel confident enough to wear the things that I actually wanted to wear to work because I wanted to hide. I didn't want to stand out, but at the same time, it was just feeding my insecurities. And so, of course, I would throw on the baggy button up and the trousers that didn't fit me well and weren't flattering on me. And I wouldn't be happy with what I saw in the mirror because it wasn't flattering and it wasn't me. And I want to tell this to you guys, because if you've experienced that, maybe it's time to evaluate like how you feel about yourself and your confidence. And if that's affecting the way you dress, because I've seen that relationship between my self-image and my self-esteem and my closet. Yes, my style has evolved over time, but I feel so much more confident in what I wear. And I don't care about whether something I wear is in style or trendy or whether it's too bold or calls attention to me. As long as it's appropriate for the occasion and for the place and time, I don't care. Like I do not own one fitted button up top, guys. I felt like I was told by everybody like, oh yes, that's how a professional woman should dress. You should put on a button up and some trousers. And I'm like, I hate it. That is not me. That is not my style. If you love it and that's your style, that's great. Wear what you feel confident in. But for me, I was like, oh no. And then the last takeaway, it's so important to dress for yourself. It's so important to do things and not just the way you dress, but to do things that make you happy and not to appease everybody else. Because if you're doing it for everyone else, you're robbing yourself of that confidence, of that joy for not being authentically you. So if you wanna wear bold patterns, if you want to wear sexy clothes, if you want to, you know, wear the mini skirt, wear the crop top, wear a certain style, do it. Don't, don't second guess it. Don't think like, oh, well, what are other people going to think? Or, oh, what if people think I look silly? What if, you know, my friends make a comment and think I don't look trendy or stylish? Do it anyways. I've learned from my own negative self-talk in my head that it's usually mostly inside your head. Go out there, dress yourself the way that makes you feel confident because you are beautiful and you are a badass and you shouldn't be dressing for anybody else's approval. I learned it the hard way. So thank you for watching guys. Remember to subscribe subscribe and there's also other videos that you can check out from my channel so see you next time love you <laughs>
those fashion <laughs> those fash fashion oh my god <laughs> Are the things in your closet? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got this. Hello. Hello. Oh God. <laughs> Hi there.